Hearing the stories from, from my great uncles and, and a lot of the other older gentlemen that, that uh, are around still today, uh, they used to have a, a fleet back in the, the, the 40s and 50s and early, into the early 60s of uh, some smaller vessels that would go out and, and do hand trolling and, and hand pulling of, of uh, halibut gear to, to uh, be able to make a moderate means of uh, providing for their families. So that kind of went out when the DFO took over management of fisheries uh, on the coast and it, uh, it kind of eliminated the, the fleet as general because you needed to be a licensed fisher to, to continue uh, commercially fishing. And a mandate was given to the Council of Haida Nation to create this mosquito fleet for our people to get back on the water. So today, um, because the mosquito fishery is not uh, federally licensed uh, under the Haida Nation's authority, we, uh, the Council of Haida Nation, through our fisheries program, buys back the, the caught fish, whether it's halibut or, or salmon, and, uh, and we buy it back so that we can share it and distribute it amongst our, our citizens and also uh, use it for trade with other, with other uh, First Nations. Pretty much every community or every family in Skidigat had a boat and then fished in the summer, sometimes in the fall or spring as well, um, you know, commercially, and that's how they made their living. You know, that, that, that's not what happens today. Today we, we have very few, only a handful of boats that are um, still uh, in Skidigat. We know that there have been changes, you know, to, um, you know, the fisheries, like salmon is not as important as it, it once was for the commercial fishery, um, but there's a Develop, there's, a, a, uh, there's been a rapidly expanding recreational fishery um, here in the islands. But there is also that economic piece. I mean, if you look at our economies back in our history, fishing had everything to do with our economy of the day. You know, in terms of bartering uh, species that are unique to Haida Gwaii. You know, so our cow and you know some other species, we would go and hit the hit the road and and barter for, for oolikins and things that weren't, and weren't available in the Haida Gwaii. So it was a big economic piece of who we are. The Haida Enterprise Corporation, Haiko. So Haiko is the, the, the entity that manages our, our, our business assets on behalf of all Haida people. There's about $85 million in landed catch revenue that come out of the waters around Haida Gwaii. Um, and out of that 85 million, less than 1% of that uh, actually touches Haida Gwaii before it, before it leaves to be to, to the global markets. We wanted to find a way for us to have, have our little piece in, of, of that opportunity for, for our, our people to get into, into, back into the, the fishing business. And so the, so the plan looks at all, at all those aspects and says what can we do um, together to kind of make, um, you know, make changes. Um, you know, the kind of changes we, we look at are, are around, um, um, you know, uh, we talk about a community-based fisheries economy. Um, so, you know, how can we make sure that more of the fish that are caught in Haida Gwaii waters, you know, how can that better contribute to the economy of Haida Gwaii? You know, whether that's through fishing, you know, whether it's through um, uh, fish, fish processing or, or marketing. Fishing isn't that. It's not something, an industry that we, we were part of for 40 years. It goes back into our, our deep entrenched history of who we are. You know, we're, we're water people. You know, our sustenance depends on the ocean resources. And we have to fight for it. You know, we can't just be part of a history that saw this, all this happen and we did nothing about it. That's the significance of, uh, of what we're trying to do now.